Welcome back. Well, uh, for starters, we like to start off more or less flattish. The good news overnight is US markets ended in the green and crude oil prices have cooled off uh, a little bit as well. But we listed down all the top 10 stocks that we're tracking. Let's get to some fundamental analysis on each of them. Siddharth Kemka, the head retail research at Motilal Oswal, joins us on the show. Hi, Sid. Good morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Well, tell us about TVS Motors. Uh, you know, that's been the big outperformer. The numbers were pretty good. Sonia just told us about that. How would you approach the stock at around 1,600 rupees? Yeah, very good morning, Nigel. Good to be on your show early morning. So I think uh, results have been pretty uh, good. Uh, uh, however, we were expecting uh, the good set of numbers from the auto sector itself. So uh, more or less operationally, the numbers were in line with our expectations. Uh, uh, it recorded highest ever EBITDA margin of 11%, and which was an increment of uh, uh, 40 basis points on a Q-on-Q -Q basis. And we believe that there is further uh, scope for margin improvement in coming quarters led by operating leverage, low marketing expense, uh, and uh, uh, there would be a strong earnings growth uh, driven by recovery in the underlying segments as, and as we expect the margin improvement uh, to be there. But uh, on the flip side, what looks like is that the valuation seems to capture this upside with almost uh, stock trading at 35 times FY24 and 30 times FI25, uh, uh, FI25P. So that we believe that there, there could be little room for upside given that the other two-wheeler companies are trading at a steep discount. Uh, so while we are positive on the overall earnings and the growth trajectory, uh, the uh, valuation looks capped and hence uh, we are kind of a neutral rating on uh, TVS Motor. Okay, that's interesting. You have a neutral rating on TVS Motor. There's also a bearish view. Uh, Nomura has in fact downgraded the stock to a neutral. They have a target price of 1760. I think the one concern is that the, the subsidies continue to be loss making. So there's a bit of a drain, right? A cash drain on that front. Um, and that may sort of put a lid on the gains. And the stock, of course, has rallied a lot. But uh, Siddharth, good morning and thanks for joining in. There are plenty of other stocks that I do want to talk about. DLF is the other one. Highest ever collection this time at almost 2,400 crores. And the commentary from all other developers, you know, whether it's macro tech, prestige, is that the going is very good. From this entire lot, um, what are the stocks that you prefer in the real estate space? Yeah, so if you look at, I think a uh, lot of these um, real estate companies, they have been announcing at least on the operational front, uh, which is your, uh, the, uh, the pre-sales data has been pretty strong. And uh, even uh, for DLF, you've seen that some of the luxury segments that they have launched have, have all been lapped up in record times. So I think uh, uh, that is something which has been a big positive for the entire real estate space where the demand, uh, despite the, uh, uh, the increase in the interest rates in the last, uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, in the last few quarters, uh, demand has still been pretty strong. Uh, we also had the macro tech uh, numbers, the Obra reality numbers. So within this space, uh, we like two stocks. A is the Godrej properties and B, uh, macro tech developers. They also came out with numbers. Uh, they reported sales booking of 35 billion, which was up 12%. Uh, overall uh, sales stood in line with our expectations. And uh, with this quarter, if you see the total first half pre-sales of almost 70 billion is up 15%. And company has achieved 50% of its pre-sales guidance. Uh, the uh, the management commentaries regarding the festive sales and festival bookings have been pretty strong, not only for the real estate sector, but I think across uh, the uh, industries, uh, the festive season, at least so far, has been pretty good. And we will still have the upcoming festive season of Diwali and the new year. So I so think it looks pretty good. And as I said, uh, within that, we prefer uh, a macro tech developers where we have a target price of 900 and uh, Godrej uh, properties where we also have a buy rating. Mm. <clears throat> Got that. Asidat, hi, good morning. Uh, did you, uh, it's actually so much to discuss, right? Uh, so many numbers, uh, m, &M Finance uh, sold off 10% yesterday. There was an AU bank uh, uh, acquisition uh, by the close of it. The market was, uh, market didn't, I guess, like it, at least the first cut. AU bank was down sharply. Uh, but I want to talk about Supreme Industries, which reported numbers. By the way, we had the management with us as well. Supreme Industries rallied some four, 500 bucks in the last 30 minutes of trade yesterday. A huge move. Numbers came a little earlier. Uh, there's almost a one percentage, full one percentage point increase in margins uh, for Supreme in the second quarter. Any thoughts, uh, uh, Sid? So, uh, uh, Prashant, unfortunately, we don't cover Supreme, so I have not had a look at it. 
Mm. What about the other two? Uh, M&M Finance or uh, AU Bank would, uh, I mean, you know, the, would the second quarter numbers for M&M Finance uh, be a durable derating kind of event or, uh, you know, people will come around to this one? Yeah, I think uh, if you look at M&M Finance, BAT uh, was a sharp uh, decline, 48% uh, decline and even a sharp miss, 44% uh, miss. Uh, but as you said, yes, I think uh, until the uh, two quarters ago, m and Finance had managed to reduce its uh, volatility in its NIMS and had shown sharp improvement in its earnings performance, uh, led by streamlining of operations, enhanced risk management. Uh, but has now, uh, they, have, they have reported two quarters of back-to-back -back, uh, uh, earnings uh, miss in a kind of way, which is kind of uh, leading to these uh, pressure uh, in the overall numbers, I think uh, uh, we we the, the management is guiding for a or for a change in the product mix, and uh, overall growth I think will will remain uh, uh, pretty stable. Uh, so having said that, I think uh, uh, so we have a positive view. We believe that M and M Finance is going through a transformation in its product and customer mix. Uh, NIM profile will change with uh, with and will find a suitable normal where the market will also find some time to adjust to the new change. Uh, valuations are now comfortable at about one and a half, one point seven times uh, FI twenty five uh, price to book. So we believe that risk reward is favorable, but uh, there could be one or two more quarters of pain where the transition uh, keeps happening. Now, so that Kema Kemka is still with us. So let's go to him. So that uh, there were many other, you know, good numbers that we saw. Um, Nigel was speaking about Vesuvius, 20% margins on that business. Blue Star saw very healthy growth, revenue growth of almost 20%. Something like a Spandana Spurti was very strong as well. AUM growth almost 70%. Any of these companies that you liked in terms of earnings? Yeah, so I think uh, a lot of these mid-caps uh, have come out with strong numbers uh, with the likes of... Uh, uh, Spandana Spurti, where we we have a very positive view uh, for the uh, the entire MFI space. I think uh, that is doing uh, well and kind of uh, seeing a good recovery. Uh, if you look at the numbers, uh, that has been pretty strong. Pat was up 127 percent and um, uh, six percent higher than our expectation, driven by the higher other income. Uh, NI grew 70 percent, which was in line. Uh, the company continued to pursue its customer acquisition led growth. Uh, uh, with the addition of uh, 350,000 uh, borrowers, which is, uh, again, a good uh, growth. I think uh, if you look at the core numbers, there hasn't been a healthy AUM growth. Uh, and in line with what we are seeing across financials, there is a minor compression in NIMS. Uh, but if you look at overall, we believe that the new management has successfully navigated through various disruptions and has led uh, to the consequent improvement uh, in the asset quality. And with the strength and process, it is now uh, ready to capitalize on the strong opportunity in the MFI sector. We are expecting ROAs uh, to improve uh, to 4.4% 4 .4 by FI26. Uh, and hence, we believe that it's a good uh, st uh, stock, Spandana Sputi, in the entire MFI space. We have a target price of 1100, which is almost 20% upside from current levels. Okay, all right. Uh, just stay with us, uh, Siddharth. You know, I think we're getting some commentary coming from the Bank of Japan. They've maintained, uh, you know, their policy stance, I think. Uh, so, you know, no big surprise, I think, that's coming out of that. We'll try to get in further details. But I think it's just coming uh, in. The 10-year uh, yield, I think, is what they're talking about. They're likely to keep easing patiently for price call and uh, wage gains as well. So I don't think there's any big surprise. We'll try to get some of those lines that flash for you on the screen. Well, so that final question before we let you go. You know, in a short while from now, we'll have the management of APL Apollo. That's been a big, big winner. The numbers were a little bit lower than what we were working with. Your view on the stock at these prices? Uh, I think uh, APL Apollo has been consistently delivering strong numbers. The space that they are operating in, they are almost like market leaders and they have been consistently uh, doing well quarter after quarter. So this was another quarter where they reported healthy volume growth of 12%. Uh, the product mix is improving. Uh, they have been consistently adding capacity. So uh, we believe that with incremental capacity from the newer plants, plus uh, the de-bottlenecking, uh, plus the new, uh, the addition of high margin products from the Raipur unit, uh, which should result in strong volume growth and margin expansion. So, so the, the good part is that the growth continues. We are expecting a revenue growth of almost 30% and pad growth of 50% in the next two years. So I think uh, it's still a top pick in the mid-cap space from us. We have a target of uh, 1930, 
and I think the stock should continue to do well. Mm. <clears throat> so that uh, stay with.